Um, I want to say once again, I am so looking forward to this conversation because it's going to dig into some advanced move that is going to elevate your firm. This is Lauren Fogelman with Business Success Solution. And the topic is how accounting firms build stronger client relationships through newsletters. And we're going to be talking with Ryan Riker today. And some of the things we're going to be focusing on is strategies to stay connected with clients year round, how newsletters actually can lead to new business and effective way that newsletters will transform your firm's client relationships. So I suggest that you get ready to take some notes because Ryan is generally generously going to share, and then we'll let you know how to connect with him as we wrap up. So a little bit about Ryan. He's an EA and a CFP with a practicing tax profession in San Diego, California. He's also a leading figure in the continuing education world for tax professionals. Ryan has this knack for breaking tax topics into presentations that actually keep attendees engaged and learning throughout the entire day. Plus, Part of what we're also focusing on is his other business. He has a client-facing publication called Tax News and Tips. And if you want to find out more about Ryan, as well as Tax News and Tips, the website is taxnewsandtips.com. So Ryan, look forward to our conversation today. Thank you so much for popping out time in your busy schedule for us to have this conversation. Thanks for having me. This is going to be a great time. And before we get really into everything, I'm interested in knowing how did you get into the information, tax information business, whether it's actually education or the newsletters? Yeah. So when I was young, teenager, my mom worked in the industry. And so I started doing tax work for her. Um, and then when I turned 23, so this was a number of years ago, uh, I was approached by a woman, Lisa Eim, who was heavily involved in the education industry. And she came up to me one day and she said, hey, you seem like you're asking the right questions. You seem like you really understand this stuff on a deep level. Would you be open to teaching for me? Um, and that really kickstarted my career into education, which is what I've been doing for the last five years as, alongside the tax practice. And then randomly uh, at the very beginning of 2023, I was approached by these guys that had tax news and tips. They were looking to um, move on to something different. And so I took it over from them. And so it's just been a, a crazy experience. It's been a whirlwind. And speaking about the getting information out there, I, I know that firm owners are busy, especially during tax season, and they want to stay connected and engaged with their clients, but they don't always know how. So what's something that you see that helps to really keep those firm owners top of mind, even after tax season is over? Yeah. So, I mean, to start outside of the newsletter first, before we kind of dive into that aspect of it, I feel like there are a lot of firms these days that are are trying to get out of this whole concept of like a commoditized tax professional, right? Most clients are seeing their tax professional one time a year. They're having one hour long discussion with them and then that's it. And then they're not meeting with the client later in the year. They're not having that engagement. So I see a lot of firms moving towards this more tax planning, this kind of like focused, you know, let's meet once a quarter and talk about things. But for those firms that haven't made that move yet, um, having some kind of written communication that goes out a couple of times a year is a great way to keep taxes towards the top of your clients' minds. Because once you get out of that season, it's out of their mind. They're not thinking about it anymore. So the newsletter that we have goes out three times a year. Um, and that's great because it's not so much bothering them that they're like, I don't want to, I don't want to hear from you anymore. And it's giving them good information. And there's little blurbs in our newsletter that says, Hey, if you're going through the situation, give me a call, reach out to me. Right. And even if your client has a question, that's not directly something that's in the newsletter, they're seeing you reaching out and they're reminded of that question that they wanted to ask you. And so one of the things that I hear that I love about the newsletter is that it's really very leveraged as well as passive. So it's leveraged in the fact that you just maybe get it out there. You hit a couple buttons and it gets out to many people and also passive in the way that it's something that allows 
you to be top of mind with your clients without you having to actually get on the phone and call everybody that you do taxes for. Right, exactly. And, you know, I know some firms that will take the time to go and write their own newsletter, but it takes a lot of time. And to be able to put all that content together, I mean, our newsletter is four pages long, right? And it goes out to the client and four pages of content. If you don't write content on a regular basis, you're not staying up on that kind of stuff. It's tough to write. Um, mm -hmm. And it can take a lot of time if you're trying to do it on your own. And so having the ability to just slap your name on something that's already there, it just, it, it, it eases the whole process for everybody involved. And a lot of times I think people are, for a might be interested in a newsletter, but they, like you said, they don't have the time or the desire to write it themselves. But the other thing is that they don't actually see how maybe it might be a return on their investment. So let's just go right to the ROI and talk about, you know, what are the benefits and are there maybe even some metrics that they can track to see if it is giving them a return? Yeah, so I would say the first year of implementation of the newsletter, you'll get a really good idea of what it's doing for your business. Um, I would say that, you know, of the, like, let's say you've got a firm with maybe four or 500 clients. If you're sending a newsletter out to all of them, you might only get calls from, you know, 10, 15 people that read something in that newsletter that's like, oh, hey, this is pertinent to me. But those 10, 15 phone calls that you're going to have, those easily turn into tax planning engagements. I, I think one of the important things that we need to watch out for when we're doing work that's outside of taxis and outside of the return preparation is charging, a, you know, a reasonable amount for the work that we're providing. You know, if we're going to do a tax plan for somebody because they inherited a retirement account and we've got to sit down and advise that person, we've got to make sure that we're billing for that time. But that one phone call makes up for the cost of all of those newsletters that you sent out for the year. And so now the other nine phone calls that you have, that's all gravy. That's all money on top. Uh, OK, so some of the things that you're talking about is really um, right along what I talk about on a regular basis is that. The information, the expertise that tax firm owners have is really golden. That's like your highest value. And so many firm owners tend to give it away for free. So if you're going to go down this road of giving out tax tips throughout the year, sending a newsletter, and it leading to new calls and appointments, we want to make sure that you're getting compensated for it. And yeah. and, and and so, Ryan... <laughs> When, when you, you know, are talking with firm owners, maybe that are using your subscriptions, is that something that you sometimes have conversations with them about when they're first looking at this also? This is yeah, come up? it is. And, you know, this is also a big conversation that comes up when I'm doing my in-person education seminars, which we can get to a little bit later. Um, I, I work with a lot of solo practitioners. It's just them in their own office. And I can I, I find in having these conversations that people get into this bad habit of you take a phone call and you spend two hours working for the client on an off tax season issue and you're not billing for it. Right. Um, so, you know, you have to change that part of the model for something like a newsletter to make sense for you. Otherwise, you're going to be sending out a newsletter and you're going to hate that you're getting, you know, 20, 30 phone calls during the year and saying, well, this is a lot of extra work. Well, yes, it is extra work that you can bill for, right? And so there, mm -hmm. there's two things that have to happen. It's implementation of the newsletter and then understanding that, hey, I'm doing some kind of planning outside of tax season that I need to be charging the client for. And, you know, that's how you're providing your value. You just got to make sure you're getting your money for it. Uh, okay, so listeners, whoever is tuning in, I just want to say, think about all that free information that you give away and that we can talk about how to be able to turn that into a new stream of revenue. And the newsletter that Ryan is talking about just kind of hands this extra money to you. And it's all about really serving your clients to, to the highest good, but making sure that you are getting compensated for that knowledge, that expertise that you've gained over the years. So we touch on something so important. I'm glad that we went down that, but I want to move over to the fact that, um, you mentioned before that they might like the idea of doing a newsletter, but all that research, the writing takes a lot of time. I do a weekly email to my subscribers, to my community, and I know how much time it takes to be able to put that information together. So 
What's your suggestion for those busy firm owners that want to be able to maybe stay in touch throughout the year, but don't really have the desire or even the skill set to make it interesting and um, where they want to do the re uh, the research as well as the writing for it? Yeah. And so, I mean, that's why tax news and tips exist, right? That's that's mm -hmm. the whole premise of the newsletter is that you're busy running your firm. You're busy working with your clients. Let us step in and do what we do best, which is, you know, do all of our research. We stay on top of the trends that are happening um, in the tax world. Let us write that for you in a way that makes sense for your clients. I think that's the other thing that's that can be really difficult about writing a newsletter like this is sometimes you have to talk about complicated things in a way that a normal person can understand it. Um, and that's a process. So for us, when we're going through our writing process, right, we have a number of different authors of the material. So we're going through, we're pulling everything together, and then we have a team of people who are not tax people who go in and read this thing and make sure that, hey, the average American can sit down, read this newsletter, and get something out of it and enjoy the reading. Um, so the whole benefit here is that we're doing all of that work for you, and then we're just slapping your branding, your logo, everything all up at the top of it. So it looks like it's coming straight from you. So you're saving that time um, by not having to go out and write it yourself. And then you've got this assurance that, hey, this is something my client's going to get, and it's something that is going to be relevant for them. And as you're talking about that, uh, even for someone that maybe wants to DIY, they actually like the writing and the research, yeah. just never moved in this direction. Are there certain sections that you feel they ought to have in a newsletter, whether they're getting it through you or they're doing it themselves? Yeah. So so one of our super popular segments in our four page newsletter that goes out is this section called truth versus myth. So we live in the information age right now. Everybody's on social media, even, you know, even the older generations are doing the social media thing. They're on Facebook, they're on, you know, LinkedIn. And when they're on those platforms, they're constantly bombarded with tax advice. And the problem with that tax advice is that people on social media are trying to be flashy. So they come up with these crazy strategies, they let it out onto the internet, and then normal people listen to it, but they don't understand the nuance, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we do in that section is we say, hey, this is a popular myth that's going around right now, and here's the truth behind it. And sometimes there is a good amount of truth behind that myth, um, but it's breaking it down and 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 putting a, a realistic understanding of Hey, yeah, you could pay your kids to work in your business, but you need to watch out for X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, your business could pay rent to you personally, the shareholder. You know, we we talk about stuff like that that pops up all the time on the internet. Um, and it, it really helps to kind of dial back that misinformation that people are getting out there. Uh, so, so that's one big one. And then yeah. tax legislation that's pending and stuff like that. We talk about all that stuff as well. Uh, OK, so basically you want to give them some of the new laws that are coming through, but you also don't want them getting their tax advice from TikTok. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And and if a firm wants to go down this road of doing a newsletter. Um, so I know that there's certain things regarding the FTC uh, sending out information to your clients. Do they need any particular software to be able to send out a newsletter? So I think it's important that you're that you're safeguarding your client's information, right? And so you do need to be careful about who you are giving this information to. Um, so yes, I would say that if you're going to use some kind of third party where you're going to go ahead and input client data, you know, you've got to watch out for that. You've got to make sure that you're using a source that you trust. Um, when you're passing out that data and doing all that stuff. And it, it definitely is a concern. And it's something that we we take very seriously um, in our privacy policy that we set up for the newsletter. Um, so yeah, I would say it's, it's important to consider. And is there anything else that you can think of as far as this becoming part of the client relationship strategy? Could, could you dial into that question just a little bit deeper? Sure. So part of what we were talking about a little bit more uh, before was staying top of mind with your clients and how this is a way of being able to do it in a more leveraged as well as a passive way is through a newsletter. Is there any other way aside from 
a newsletter possibly leading to their phone ringing that you see as this being a part of the current relationship strategy? Yeah, I do. I think that, you know, one of the things that I, I hear from people who are tax professionals that use let, the newsletter and then also from my own clients who receive our newsletter as well um, is that this is a way not only to stay in touch with the client, but also to keep you at the top of the client's mind. So that way, when their friend comes to them and they say, hey, I'm looking for a tax professional, that client isn't just thinking, well, they should just go out and find whoever because I just use whoever. You're at the top of their mind because you're sending them, you know, out this material, you know, once a quarter. And so they're seeing that and they're saying, oh, yeah, I love my tax guy. He sends me, you know, these newsletters throughout the year. And it does, it helps with not only getting those additional engagements for tax planning, but also bringing in new business as well. And and, and I want to really... Uh go into that from my own experience also is that not only do the people that are your clients read these newsletters, but also sometimes they forward them to other people. So now this is a way of getting client referrals in a a new way that wasn't able to happen before. And and sometimes this is easier because just forwarding something or, or sharing something like that is something that people feel is very generous and coming from a good place. So Absolutely. have you seen that with the people that are using the tax tips and news also? Yeah. So one of the things that we really push is that in today's day and age, you get so many emails into your inbox, right? So one of our big uh, you know, differentiators with our newsletter compared to many others is that we are one of the few companies that really pushes for this printed newsletter that looks really nice. And it's something that is really easy for your client to hand to a friend or to a family member. Because even though, you know, let's say that we're talking about inheriting a retirement account in an article in the newsletter, your client might not be facing that, but they might have a friend or family member who is. And that newsletter just you know, you them quickly handing it to that friend or family member and seeing your firm's name right up at the top of it. It's like, hey, I'm getting good information here and I've got the contact information for the person I can reach out to um, to learn more. And and the other part that I know uh, is that firm owners, they don't want to annoy people um, and maybe bombard them. So you were talking about sending it out three times a year, but is there anything else that you see as far as maybe striking a balance between how often uh, having some promotional uh, information there as well as content in the newsletter? Yeah, so the reason that we do it three times a year is because for during that first you know quarter of the year, you're meeting with that client anyway. And so you don't need to have that additional uh, you know conversation with mm-hmm. them. You don't need to have that additional connection with them during that time. The first newsletter goes out in the middle of May, right? And so that's just post-tax season. Maybe something's happened since you filed the return. Now they're thinking about you. Another one doesn't go out until, you know, right now we have one coming out this month, so August. And then the final one goes out in uh, November. And that newsletter is prepping people for the next year. So it's this nice balance of they're getting a lot of content when they receive the newsletter, but they're receiving it during times of the year that they wouldn't normally be reaching out to you um, for things. And and then in the content of the newsletter, do you have any maybe call to actions where call me about this, um, if this is, or anything else that could be even a little bit more promotional. So it's not just about the content. Yeah, that's a big thing for us. So we recognize that there's a lot of nuance that we cannot discuss in the newsletter because there's there's so many ways that it could go, right? Like, as I said, in this August edition of the newsletter, we talked about inheriting retirement accounts. We talked about the Medicare premiums look back a little bit. That stuff can get insanely complicated very quickly. So we hit on the big things that your clients need to watch out for as far as their situation is concerned. Sometimes we talk about the tax impact, but a lot of the time we're discussing an issue, we're giving a solution, we're giving an answer, but then we're saying, call me if this is happening to you. So that way we can go over it in detail. So almost every single article has a call to action. The only ones that don't, I would say, are things like, you know, when there's like a legislative 
um, issue that we're talking about where it's like, hey, there's these new laws that might come into play, um, but they haven't passed yet. So we wouldn't say contact me about this right now. But when we're talking about a tax issue that has been passed, yes, we are we are big on pushing in that newsletter. Please call us, you know, for more information. Call us if it sounds like you're in this situation. Um, we really want the clients to be reaching out to you. And something that I know is back in the day, all newsletters were print, but now so many of them end up in your news box, uh, in your inbox. They tend to be more virtual e-newsletters. So. How does a firm decide which way is the right way to go for them? Yeah, so that is a great question. And I would say it, it really depends on maybe the, the demographic of your client base, right? So if you have a lot of clients who are in this more like retiree demographic and that's kind of your niche, they want to see the printed newsletter, because they're not going to go through their email every single day and look through all the little, you know, items that come through to them and say, oh, I'm going to spend 20 minutes reading this tax article that my tax preparer sent me. But if you send that same person a physical newsletter, then they're actually going to pick it up and look at it. For me, right, in my, in my younger demographic, where we are more of like an online kind of... Um, you know, that's how we take in our mm -hmm. information. When I get stuff in the mail, it goes in the trash unless it's a bill, right? And so for those that kind of demographic, we would recommend sending either a PDF of the newsletter, or we also have an option now that allows us to put the text right in the body um, of that email for you. So it's all there. So it really does depend on your demographic of your clients. And then is this something that maybe firms can have on their website that they offer a newsletter and how to be able to sign up so that people that maybe are considering working with them can sign up for the newsletter and start following them to see if you're a good fit or not? Yeah. So, so the nice thing about the way that we have it set up is you can tell us who you want this newsletter to go out to. It is completely up to you. So let's say that you have one part of your practice that is highly specialized on clients that own rental real estate. And then the remainder of your firm is kind of more of like a general tax practice. You might say to yourself, well, I'm going to write my newsletter that's specific to real estate for those real estate clients. But for my, my general client base, I'm going to send them the taxes and tips letters. So you just give us the information for those clients that you want us to do direct mailing to. Um, or you can give us the email list for those clients that you want us to do that direct information uh, to. So it's completely your pick. If you have a prospect that wants the newsletter, they can sign up for it. As long as you give us that information, we can go ahead and send it out to them. Oh, so you're actually um, sharing something that I didn't realize when we first started talking about what um, Tax News and Tips does is that you're doing the sending for the firm. They don't have to upload it and get it all looking pretty and then hit the quick button to send it out to everybody. We do everything for That's you. even better, everybody. Yeah. I just want to say how much time you are saving them by doing it for them. Well, yeah. And, you know, I've been, be, because of the education industry, right, because I'm going out and teaching on the road, I've established some huge accounts with large print companies all across America. And when we were doing this newsletter um, and we wanted to make sure that it was going out as a print version, we found a print uh, company who we could give this information to and they can do all of the direct mailing for you. So if you're wanting to send you know, this newsletter out to 1,500 clients because you've got somewhat of a, a larger firm, you just give us the addresses, we ship that stuff out. And obviously we've got our privacy policy that covers how we utilize that mm -hmm. information and watch out for everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the printed newsletter, especially that is a, it's a great option to have. And then we also can send these emails out on your behalf. So we have a tech team that would jump on the call with you. We would set up your domain. And then once we've got that together, you just give us the email list and we can send those emails out and it looks as though it is coming from you. And when you're doing that, um, what about branding? And you said they were call to actions as far as gives, give us a call. So each of your firms that you're sending newsletters out for, it is it branded specifically for them yes. so that it represents yeah. them? So, so the way it works is we have the shell of the newsletter, uh, which is the four pages of content 
the only tax news and tips branding that we have on there is up in the top left corner of each page in the banner. And tax news and tips is a very generic name. So it sounds like, hey, you know, I'm firm owner XYZ. This is our tax news and tips newsletter. So the name is generic in such that, you know, it can show up on there and it doesn't look like somebody else is doing it. And then you've got your branding that shows up on the front page of the newsletter, um, exactly how you want it to be. So you can have your logo on there. We can get all of your information as far as your name, your address, your phone number, your email, um, all the ways that your client can reach out to you. So each one is customized to the firm that comes to us um, to send out this newsletter on their behalf. Nice, nice. And so one of the things that I do know about you, Ryan, is that you are a content creator. It is not just about the newsletter. You're doing stuff out there as far as education goes also. So can you just share a little bit about some of the other things that you are offering tax professionals? Yeah, absolutely. So I, you know, outside of taxes and tips, I own the company Brass Tax Presentations, which has been around for a long time. Uh, I think it was originally created in the late 70s, and it's been passed on through generations of tax professionals, and now it's come to be on my desk. So we do, I would say that we offer the largest number of in-person education seminars in the state of California. That's kind of our big market for our in-person stuff. Um, so we are a NASBA registered CPE provider for our in-person education. We're also, um, uh, we are you know, verified by the IRS to also give continuing education for that and CTEC as well, if you are a California tax professional. So we do about 18 in-person update seminars every year. We have another seminar series called the Tax Toolbox that we do in the latter part of September that covers four specific topics. And then we release webinars throughout the year. We also have an enrolled agent boot camp. So if you are not an enrolled agent yet, you're also not a CPA. Um, I would strongly recommend taking that EA boot camp because it will bring your tax practice into that next level as far as the services you can provide and what you can charge. We set that EA prep class up so you are getting it done in the shortest possible period of time. It's set up so that way you're just figuring out exactly how to pass the test. That's all we want you to do. Everything else you're going to learn, you're going to end up learning in practice anyway. Um, so that's our big thing there. And then I also do a lot of consulting with CPA firms and other tax offices. If you find yourself in a tax situation that you don't quite know how to, how to handle, maybe it's some kind of corporate merger, maybe it's some kind of weird rental deal that you don't know what's going on. Um, I get called in a lot of those deals and I do consulting for a lot of that stuff. And I just want to say, Ryan, um, I have Listen to some of your speakers. These are not your traditional boring speakers where an hour feels like three. These are ones where you're in, you're learning about taxes and some nuances that are going on. And it is a very engaging process. So I just want to say the um, quality of the content that you offer, especially in the seminars, is definitely first class. Yeah, we're all very passionate about what we do. Mm -hmm. I may be a little bit too passionate about what I do. <laughs> well, passion we, and fun. So, yes. you know, it's not just this information, but it's entertaining as well. Right, right. If you're going to be there for eight hours, you might as well enjoy yourself. Absolutely. Okay, so we covered some powerful points today about newsletters, whether you want to do it virtually, whether you want to do it by paper, the traditional way, and some of the things as far as the nuances, how to be able to create a new stream of revenue from this and stay top of mind with your clients. So I really enjoy our conversation today, Ryan. Every single time we talk, I always find that I'm taking away something new as far as an insight goes. Some of the things that we covered is strategies to stay connected with clients year round, how taxes and that newsletter about it can lead to new business for your firm and effective ways that you can use it to actually transform your firm's client relationships. So if anybody wants to follow up, connect with you, talk further with you, Ryan, about tax news and tips or about the educational seminars that you offer, what's the best way for them to connect with you and follow up? 
Yeah, so if you want to talk with me directly, I would suggest going to the BrassTax.com website and just sending us an Ask Us Anything question on there. And I personally uh, would love to have a chat with you and talk with you about whatever your needs are. Uh, if you're looking to go and purchase that newsletter, TaxNewsAndTips.com is the place to go to. We're running a special right now where if you are just looking to get the PDF version of that newsletter, uh, normally on an annual basis for those three editions, we would charge 650 bucks. You can send that to as many people as you want, print it as many times as you want. So what we're doing right now is we're saying, hey, we're going to do 650. You'll get the last two editions of this year's newsletter and also uh, the three editions for next year as well. So we're, we're doing a pretty big discount there. That is a pretty sweet deal. And as you said, you just bring in one or two of your clients for some tax planning, tax strategy, and you're getting compensated for that. It pays for itself. It creates a new stream of revenue without needing any additional clients. So, Ryan, I want to thank you. I want to thank everybody that's joining us. This is Warren Fogelman with Business Success Solution, showing accounting firm owners how to double their income working half the time. <laughs>